We're now joined by uh, Kevin Slavin, president and CEO of St. Joseph's Health. And as we speak at the end of November, he is the uh, chair of the New Jersey Hospital Association until uh, February 1st, I think, 2021. Is that right, Kevin? That's correct, Steve. Let's do this. Biggest lessons you've learned about COVID and handling it from a healthcare perspective to date? Uh, biggest lessons have been the incredible uh, innovation, dedication shown by all the frontline healthcare workers, but also the leadership of hospital systems throughout the state, as well as state government. And being the chair, of the hospital association. Again, when this is seen after, you'll be the outgoing chair a little bit later in 2021. What to, to what degree do you see collaboration among hospital and between the hospital presidents for whom there's usually a lot of intense competition? Absolutely. We saw just uh, tremendous collaboration, competitors that uh, put everything aside, put the competitive landscape aside during this pandemic helped each other out, not just in the local competitive uh, landscape, in local markets, but throughout the state. Uh, there was one instance on a weekend where uh, Central State, John Gribbins Hospital, was in need of, of surgical gowns, and uh, there was a hospital from the north who provided those. And, and do you think that'll, okay, let's assume pan, uh, the uh, vaccine plays out, more and more people get it in 2021. Do you believe that that spirit of collaboration will continue, Kevin? I believe it will because uh, everyone across the state realizes that working together, the healthcare system was stronger and more resilient, uh, whether it be on the, the allocation of personal protective equipment that we did early on in the process, all agreed on a formula that once there was an allotment that came out of the federal and state stockpile that we would share it according to that formula. Uh, having a common visitation policy so there's not confusion in a community. Why is one hospital having a visitation policy that's different than another? And, you know, it could go on and on, whether it be ventilators or therapeutic drugs. Uh, so it's really benefited the residents of the state. Let's talk leadership. You and I, you're also on our uh, sister program with Mary Gamba, Lessons in Leadership. I want to go back to this question of leadership. Um, actually do some work at St. Joseph's with their leadership Academy, and let's just assume for a second we're talking about frontline healthcare workers, physicians, nurses, respiratory therapists. In your view, how much, how important is it beyond the clinical expertise, Kevin Slavin, to be a great leader on the front lines during COVID? Well, it really made a huge difference uh, watching the uh, emerging leaders step up. Uh, many of them step up and uh, without specific direction, uh, doing the right thing, innovating. Uh, coming to us saying, hey, we think we want to try this. This, this, this could work. We had the faith in them to do it, get them the resources, and many, many things happened because of that. Uh, today, I'm proud to say that our the system director of emergency services at St. Joseph's, Janine Lazan, is on the front page of Newsweek as the leading healthcare worker in the country. What's that do for an organization like St. Joseph's Health when that happens? It's a tremendous morale booster for everyone. Um, we all support Janine 100%. She's a rising star. Um, the whole story of Dr. Jim Pruden, who was our first diagnosed COVID positive patient who went on to uh, recover and uh, go home and is now back on the job. Every, every time he walks through the halls, it just boosts the morale of the organization up another level. We try this, Kevin. It's so interesting. You, St. Joseph's Health has different hospitals. One I know um, in Patterson, the main, not I don't say the main one, but a really big one, a key one. Largest. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it different dealing with COVID and a crisis like this in Patterson than it would be, say, in Wayne or in another, quote, suburban community? Is it different? And if so, how? Well, there were definitely differences. Okay. So the underserved population in Patterson, uh, uh, Latino, African American, and other area, uh, other minorities obviously were hit much harder by this. You know, the, the high housing density in Patterson led to that. In Wayne, though, we see a much older, uh, uh, growing older population, so they're also as vulnerable. So we saw different uh, different populations being impacted, but to the same severe effect. Hospital presidents. I was I talked to a lot of university presidents, as you know, and I always ask, how has their job changed? And this, the answer is dramatically. How do you believe the job of being a hospital president or hospital system president has changed significantly since March 13, 2020? 
I think we've all learned to have a renewed sense of speed. Uh, because we were forced to move extremely fast. We didn't have uh, the luxury of time, and uh, we moved fast. We took risks. Uh, we learned from our innovation centers that many of us have and applied those techniques and did it in real time. And uh, things, by and large, worked. They worked very well. We took care of the population, and, uh, the residents of the communities we serve, uh, and we learned to work at a faster rate of speed. Final question. Early on in the pandemic, I saw you shoulder to shoulder with the governor, Governor Murphy, and uh, Commissioner Perce Kelly of the Department of Health. How important is it the collaboration between government, particularly state government, and hospitals? That was, that was uh, sign very significant. Early on, myself, Kathy Bennett, the president of the Hospital Association, were part of the team that the governor put uh, together, the response team. Uh, we were at the ROC, the, the Emergency Preparedness Center, in many days, most weekends. Uh, working hand in hand with state government, being a support to state government. Um, we're asked to do many things uh, to support those efforts and the governor and, and Judy have done a tremendous job to take care of this uh, state. Kevin Slavin is the president and CEO of St. Joseph's Health. Also, as we speak, the uh, chair of the Hospital Association in New Jersey. Um, Kevin, we'll continue our conversation because these issues are not going away anytime soon. Uh, all the best to you and your team at St. Joseph's Health. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Steve. I'm Steve Adubato. We'll be right back. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by TD Bank, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the Northward Center, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, ADP, the Fidelco Group, PSE&G, and by Rutgers University, Newark. Promotional support provided by NJ On Air. And by ROINJ. The North Ward Center was founded on the vision that community is connected to neighborhood stabilization. And neighborhoods need a place for kids to play. That's why we're building a recreational complex in the heart of Newark. Unfortunately, inner city youth development programs are dwindling. We want to expand on our promise and build a place where kids are welcomed and doors remain open. The North Ward Center, building a better community, 48 years and counting.